Hey guys, it's Daniel here and today I'm going to be going through some tips and tricks for when you're replacing your YD25 cylinder head. Alright, so the main reason people always have to do heads on the YD25s is because they've overheated them. So on the D40s, usually what causes it is either the radiator top tank, the heater hose plastic fittings, the oil cooler hoses, the EGR pipe, one of them will break then they'll lose coolant and overheat and then uh, you got to do the cylinder head. So you need to find out what broke on it first so you can fix that because otherwise if you just go and replace the cylinder head and you don't know, fix whatever caused it, you'll just cook it again. So because Nissan stopped making the genuine heads for the YD25s, you're left with two options. You can get a good second hand one and recondition it or you can buy, there's a lot of aftermarket options out there, you can buy a good aftermarket head casting and load it with your genuine head internals. So that's what we've done here on this engine. So you can see the markings on the genuine cams. So this is the reason why we tell people to load the heads up with genuine internals. This camshaft here to the left is an aftermarket camshaft and this one is a genuine uh, cam. As you can see the markings on there. So on the lobe that's cleaned up there, the problem with the aftermarket camshafts is the lobes are soft and they're prone to wearing away at the lobe. So you can see the wear on the lobe there. So I'll put them side by side just so you can see just how much is worn off. It's a bit hard to show on the camera, but you can definitely see just how much is worn off that lobe. And then what happens when they wear away at the lobes is they start to eat into the shims. So you can see one here starting to eat in the shim. These are meant to be flat. This one's a bit more worn as well. Even more wear, the dip in it. This one's worn all the way through. So then it started eating into the bucket underneath it. So it is very important that you load them up with genuine internals. I'm gonna run through some tips for when you're putting it into the car. So with the tone wheel, there's a tone wheel that goes on the back of the exhaust camshaft. You need to make sure you put that on and line it up properly. It's a, there's got a dowel on it, so you need to make sure you line it up with that. I've seen it happen a number of times where people don't, and then you're going to have a whole bunch of cam crank angle correlation issues if you don't line that up properly. So make sure you put that on and put the uh, backing plate of the head on as well, because most of the time people are doing this in the car. It's very close to the firewall. You're not going to be able to get that on afterwards, so you need to put that on before you put on the head. So if you're doing the cylinder head with the engine in the car, this rear timing cover will still be on the front of the engine. And before you put on the cylinder head, you have to put uh, silicon around here on the rear timing cover, but you gotta be careful when you do it. So when you put silicon around, you don't wanna put any into that groove there. So what that groove there is for, it's there just in case you have a bit too much silicon on the outside groove, so that when it squished flat, any excess will just squish into that little groove there, and it won't uh, squish all the way and then block your top tension oil feed. So don't put too much around there and don't put it in there because otherwise it will block your top tension oil feed and it'll be rattling. So before you put on the head, you want to set the crank with drift keys to three o'clock. That means that all of the pistons will be halfway down in the bore. So that way, if you put the cylinder head on with the cams in, any of the valves that are pushing out, they won't touch the pistons. And uh, you will have to take these out to get access to some of the head bolts. So same goes for when you put the cams and the caps back on, make sure that crank woodruff key is at three o'clock and the pistons are all halfway down. Because if it's not and you tighten these down, you'll potentially be pushing some of the valves into the tops of the pistons. So the camshafts, they have dowels. So when you put on the cam sprockets, the notch in the sprockets has to line up with those dowels. Also, when you put them on, you need to put some grease on the threads and the head of the cam bolts. It's really important that you tighten up the cam bolts properly, because if they do come loose, the pistons will hit the valves. So Nissan, normally wants you to go hold it by the hex in the center of the camshaft. The problem with that is that the castings aren't that good on it. They're always all over the place, like 20 doesn't fit on it and 21's loose as on it. So if you end up holding it by the hex, what happens is you'll either round off the hex 
or because it's in a thin spot of the cam all the way in the center from the torque, it's 144 newton meters of cam bolt, it'll uh, start to twist the cam shaft. The best way to do it is to get a really big shifter with really nice flats. So you want a shifter that covers the entire width of the lobe and then you get the flat of the cam lobe to rest against the flat of the shifting spar. Then you tighten it to 144 newton meters. So after you tighten up the cam bolts, line up those dots on the sprocket with the dots on the rear timing cover. So then there'll be a 10 and two. And then you line up the woodruff key on the crank to 12 o'clock. So now these are at 10 and two, and that's at 12 o'clock, which is top dead center. That way, when you go to set up the time and chains, that's all set up. So everything should just go line up and all the dots on the sprockets and chain links will line up. Hope you guys found that video helpful. If you have any more questions, you can just leave them down in the comments.